Hello and welcome to Let's Learn Computing. Today's tutorial is to create a conversation with Scratch and it's for children aged 7 to 9. To do this lesson, you'll need to make sure that you have Scratch installed in your school network and that you have organised how the children can save and retrieve their work. You might also like to think of a conversation to do with the current topic that you're studying. So some computing vocabulary you might like to discuss with your class. Uh, is the idea that telling a computer to do something is called a command and when those are put all together that becomes an algorithm and the algorithm needs to be in the right sequence so the computer can do it. Computers also complete commands much quicker than people do so we sometimes need a block like we're going to do today to slow things down. Uh, in a conversation people talk while the other person listens and the blocks that we're going to use today in Scratch are say and wait. So let's have a look at the blocks in Scratch and you'll be able to see how to put the sequence together. So we have the sprite as the cat, as the default sprite. So for an easy activity, we can go to here and choose sprite from the library. There's many sprites to choose from. And today I'm going to choose a wizard. Okay, so hold down the mouse to move him out of the way from on top of the cat and the script to start the conversation is events when the flag is clicked then we go to looks and we use this block here that says say and you can type change the text here and there cut and now we need to click on the cat, the other sprite, and we'll do the same thing. Events. When the green flag is clicked to start the program, the cat will say a message back. And so when we click go, both of the sprites will talk at the same time. So it's a good idea to show children that to explain why we need to use this block control. So they need to decide who talks first. So uh, if you want the cat to wait first, you need to use this wait block and put it at the top here. Or if you wanted the wizard to wait first, we need to put it here. So now let's have a look. Hi wizard. Hi there cat. So the conversation on the screen looks a lot more natural. Another activity is to change the background and to do that you have to go over left of the sprites menu and click on this little button that says choose a backdrop from the library. And since we've gone with wizards I think that the castle scene would be a good one. And you can hold down the mouse to drag them to the right place. Another task which can help to make the conversation look more natural is to get the sprites to face each other. So in this case it's the cat that we want to face left, so we need to use two blocks for this. Make sure that the mouse is clicked on the sprite that you want to change and point in direction and this needs to change to left. And when we do this, and when you click the flag, left, it will be upside down. So the other one that we need to use is set the rotation style to only rotate left or right. The other options, the default one, which it is at the moment, is rotate all around and this is why it's upside down so we want to do that. So now when we click the flag the sprites are facing each other. Okay so you can also have uh, multiple backgrounds and get them to change as the conversation takes place. So we've been on the outside of the castle and then we can come up to the to the castle here using this picture and so the script to do that, we can delete the white background that starts at the start. Okay, so the script to do that is to go to scripts and use the timing block as well. Okay, so we want to go to events. When the green flag is clicked, looks, next backdrop. But we also need to wait a few seconds. So let's say we wait for three seconds. And meanwhile, the sprites are having a conversation. So let's go back to the sprites and have a look at the scripts. So the cat talks first and says hi. 
the wizard talks second and says hi there cat so now it's time for the cat to talk so we want to wait and then we go to looks then the next thing he says can be let's go to the castle and the wizard you need to wait after he's said that go to looks and then he can say yes good idea okay so you can need to do well the children will need to do the math for how many seconds to set when the next background changes so there's three seconds here four five six seconds okay so i need to change that then i'm going to wait let's put it seven see how that works and encourage the children to trial the the timings of the sprites That's okay. Remember that you can also add sounds to make the conversation even more interesting. And to do that, you go up to the top here and click on sounds. And there are many sounds in Scratch as well. So you can choose a sound from the library. I'm going to go for some footsteps. And they'll play just before they're getting to the second scene. So I've realized that at the start of the program, it won't change back to the default backdrop. So I need to firstly fix that instead of Castle 5, Castle 3 is the previous one, as you can see in the backdrops. Okay, so now when I want the sound to play after 5 seconds, so I'm going to say wait 5 seconds, and then you can see when I click on the sound menu here, the footsteps sound which I've imported is now available in this block. So then play the sound and then control, then it can wait one second for the next backdrop following that. So remember it's also possible to draw your own sprites or to even import a sprite from another image and a really good website to do that is this one open clip art and so I'm going to have a next backdrop for the inside of the castle and put a broomstick in the castle. So search for broomstick and the reason I like this site is because it gives you the images in PNG file type so that the background won't be a big white rectangle. So I'll just download it as a small image, right click, save image as, and save. Then back in Scratch, go to this one, upload a sprite from file, and click on the broom. And it's there. So remember that you need to use the shrink tool or the grow tool to change the size of the sprites. And so once that shrink um, cross is showing there, you can drag it around and put it in the right place. Now I only want the broomstick to be on the inside of the house. So I need to go back to the stage. I'm going to import a new backdrop, which is the inside of the castle, this one. I need to tell the computer when to change over to that background. So I need to go to scripts and uh, I've already waited one second after the next backdrop. So I just go to next backdrop. So this is the list. So it starts outside and gets closer and goes to the inside. Now I only want this broomstick to appear when it's on the inside. It can be um, at the stairs there. So again, you need to count the seconds. So we're waiting six seconds, and then it will go to the next backdrop. So this one needs its own script. Click on the, the new sprite that you've imported, and then go to events. When the program starts, looks, hide, and control, you need to wait six seconds, and then looks, show. Okay, let's see how that works. So it's hidden nicely at the start. And then remember this use the full screen and then the broomsticks there as well. Finally, you can also add movement to your characters. And to do that, you need to do the X and Y coordinates for the sprites. So I'm going to make the cat move. And when he's on the inside of the, the castle here, 
and he can go over to the right here. So you need to use the mouse and you can see the x coordinates there are about x is 10 and y is let's say minus 100. So that is in the motion. So this is where he'll be at the start of the program. x10, y minus 100. So click in there, y minus 100. So let's say he waits 6 seconds and then I'm going to go to motion and he's going to glide to different coordinates. So I'm going to go over to here. So that's around about x200 and y minus 10. So glide to x200 and y minus 10. And how many seconds is he going to take to do that? I'm going to set that to 2 seconds. Alright, so now if I've got the timing right, then I can see if it's finished. So I can use the blue button up here to go to full screen and let's see what it looks like all together. And the gliding bit at the end. That's the end of this tutorial. To request a tutorial or to download a copy of the slides used in this tutorial, please visit www.letslearncomputing.com or if you're in the Qatar area and you would like me to do some training at your school or college on integrating technology, visit the website as well. Thank you for listening.